Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Angela Fischetti, and she is going to be talking about osteoporosis and strength training for the lower body, and she's even going to show you a workout that you can do. Please welcome her to the show. It's nice to see you, Angela. Thank you so much for having me on today, Chef AJ. I really appreciate it. Well, it's my pleasure. So why are you so interested in osteoporosis? Well, I had it. I was diagnosed a few years ago, and um, I'm probably about now closer to four years ago. I'm going to be 65. And uh, I was told I had the osteoporosis of a 90-year-old. Mm -hmm. and I can't believe you're 65. Excuse me for interrupting because you look amazing. Maybe 45, but not 65. Well, I'm going to thank you for that. And um, so um, I knew that I had to do a lot of work and I did. And it took three years. And I'm now what I call age appropriate osteopenic. And the difference being quite actually dramatic because osteoporosis, as you know, is a pathology. Osteopenia is not. The thing is, is that it can be a warning sign. So you want to watch the diet and you've got to get into strength training. And that's what I'm here to present for everybody is basically my anecdotal experience of what I've done and continue to do to maintain osteopenia and, um, and see how much further we can go from there. So and had you done any strength training before being diagnosed with osteoporosis? Yes, but to understand something, I had years of where I did nothing. It was probably four or five years at least because I was tending and caring for my very best friend who was in the, the process of passing away. And she had a very rare melanoma. I let myself go. I was 42 pounds heavier than what I am now. And I just didn't take care of myself, Chef AJ. I resorted to like vegan junk food and vegetarian crap is what I ate. And so this is, this is what happened, you know? How, how long have you been vegan or, or plant-based? Well, I've been, I mean, gosh, I went uh, vegetarian back in 19, what was it? 86, 87, when Diet for a New America was published. And I just remember walking out of my room after I read the book and I saw my cat and her name was Honey Bunny at the time. And I looked at her and I said, no, -uh, I can't do this. So that I, it was instant. So I stopped the meat. It took dairy, particularly cheese, being American Italian. It took it um, about, I would say, two to three years more. And then I went vegan. But it was never a linear process, really, Chef AJ, until I found you. Wow. And I mean that for wholeheartedly because Sophis Free completely resonated with me. I mean, I was in a rehab for addiction and I had problems with bulimia and anorexia. And, and I mean, back then they called it bulimorexia. This was back in, I want to say, 91. But I put myself into a yoga, kundalini yoga based rehab. But it was run by yoga Sikhs who were all medical doctors and RNs. They put us on vegetarian and vegan food. We didn't do drugs, no medications. We were on like personalized herbal protocols. And that's where I got introduced to massage therapy as therapy. We are yoga therapy. So these influences lasted with me all of these years, but it wasn't linear. And ultimately, you know, I think about Dr. Jen Hawk when she said, and she says many times that relapse is a part of recovery. And I would say I probably had three major relapses. And this is in between two five year stretches of being a raw vegan as well. So, but it, when it came to Sophis Free, that was it for me. And now it's been, I don't know, I think it's five plus years maintain 42 pound weight loss. And really, Chef AJ, I thank you so much because it lends itself to me for a calm, stable brain. And I was once diagnosed as manic depressive mm -hmm. back in 90. And wow. I was on medications for 25, 28 years straight. And I've been drug free for this amount of time as well. 
That's amazing. Well, in case people watching don't know the expression soap is free, which is a great way to be, stands for sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and salt. It's sort of a branching off of Dr. Goldhammer's acronym SOS, sugar, oil, salt, because people weren't realizing that flour and alcohol were also refined carbohydrates. So that is amazing. Where did you, where'd you find me, Angela? Uh, on the internet. I was just, uh, you know, browsing around and this was way before, well, it's a couple of years before the pandemic. And the, the biggest impact was because one of the first times that I watched you, I actually went, I'm going to check out her summit because you had an ultimate weight loss summit that year. And it might've been the first yeah, or this probably four or five years ago. Yeah. Well, definitely at least. And it was, and you had on who became my doctor, Dr. Frank. Uh, he's the great. Yeah. Another Italian American. Another, he's like, he's like a brother. Yeah. And so, um, and so I had had several diagnoses prior to that, just prior chef AJ with, well, I mean, eight masses in my body and, um, they were all, they were, they, they were benign, but I had three high cancer markers and all of that has, settled i still have seven masses that i deal with but hey i just look at them as temporarily taking up space in this abode which is my body if chris carr can handle stage four cancer for over 20 years i can handle this and uh but i did shed my body of a small orange sized cyst off my right ovary and i got rid of uh, endometrial hyperplasia and um and my doctors were all like don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. And it <laughs> is a protocol. And part of this was I did a water fast with Dr. Frank Sabatino. So between the two of you, I have to say to you humbly and from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. You know, it's hard to believe you were 42 pounds heavier. Do you have a photo anywhere of that? You know what? My computer crashed recently and it took it with it. So I don't, I'm sorry, but I did I just, you know, it was uh, 42 pounds on me. It was the only one shot I had. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Well, if if it ever comes back, let me know. We'll put it as a thumbnail because people love weight loss success stories. What, what I can do for you is send you a photo of send you a photo of me holding up some of my old my old clothing if you'd like. Sure, that sounds great. So the workout you're going to show us, can anyone do that with any type of physical ability or disability, if you will? Okay, so basically, from a, a medical disclaimer perspective, all right, the, the I don't want to say anything or do anything that's outside of my personal scope of practice. I am a licensed massage therapist. I'm certified in personal training, hatha yoga, et cetera. But I designed this from the perspective of preventing osteoporosis. And if you have a mild case, what I would tell you to do is preview the video first before participating and take it a little further, perhaps show it to the medical healthcare practitioner that knows your body best before participating. Because if you get the clearance, it will be quite safe. Now, people can do this. I'm going to be using accessories today. I'm wearing a 20 pound weighted vest. Am I going to tell you for the first time to put on a 20 pound weighted vest? No. But what I will tell you is you might want to put the fabric on just the fabric because these things, they're hot and just getting used to that. Um, so you can do it without accessories. I'm also going to use a fit ball, two light, uh, light weights of dumbbells, um, a, a large umbrella and a chair. And an uh, exercise loop. You don't need any of it, particularly if you are brand new. Further medical disclaimer for people with osteoporosis, hyperkyphosis, which is this, any kind of like spinal stenosis, herniated or bulging discs, any kind of spine issues, preview first and then get clearance. I had to get clearance before I got into my strength training then, after my diagnosis. Yeah. Nice. An umbrella. That's intriguing. <laughs> Some people, I, I lived in the desert for years and I don't think I owned an umbrella the entire time. 
Yeah, this is a large one. And actually, this exercise was uh, inspired by Dr. Jamie Delaney, plant-based cardiologist out of Florida. But, um, you know, if you want me to, Chef AJ, I'm happy to go into ch chatting a little bit more about um, what where I gathered my information from I, and how I called it. I called it from Dr. Frank Sabatino and from Dr. Michael Clapper. And with Dr. Frank Sabatino, he's been on your show on the, on the live several times and several times he has talked about strength training for women and osteoporosis. He's also spoken about it several times on Feel Fabulous Over 40, as well as the other project you both did together, which was Lean for Life. So he knows that I basically am kind of reproducing what he's talking about. And then I have my own little bit of a take on it as well. As far as Dr. Michael Clapper goes, he has an outstanding video from 2015 that's called Healthy Bones, Preventing and Reversing Osteoporosis. And here he talks about bones being living dynamic structure. I made some, I wrote some notes, so I'm referring to them because I want to get this right. And um, they renew themselves Bones will renew themselves with cells that break down old bone and with cells that lay down new bone. So osteoclasts break down old bone. So I like to think of it as like osteoclasts kill old bone. And then there's osteoblast boo -boo, that lay down new bone, basically doing bone reshaping or bone remodeling. So osteoblasts build new bone. Dr. Clapper also asks a, a great question when he says, what makes osteoblasts create new bone? He says the most important factor is what wakes up our osteoblasts is when our bones are being used against gravity. Chef AJ, that's what we're doing here for strength training. Osteoporosis, he says, is primarily disuse atrophy of bones, not calcium deficiency, made worse by diet and lifestyle practices. And he also says, believe it or not, use it or lose it. So I thought that was kind of hilarious. Now, um, I also wanted to mention the guidelines here. Um, almost all of the plant exclusive doctors follow the guidelines as it pertains to exercise of, of the American College of Sports Medicine and the American Heart Association. So for strength training purposes, and in the case of my class here, we're going to mostly do compound movements. This means multiple joints and multiple muscles, and they reflect activities of daily living. You do one to three sets, depending upon where you're at, you know, beginner and intermediate advanced, eight to 15 repetitions. That's what I say. I give a little wiggle room. A, uh, the American College of Sports Medicine says 10 to 12 repetitions. You do this for 20 to 30 minutes and you do it two times a week. Now, what if you are a seasoned strength trainer? Well, yes, do it longer and do it more often. Just do it on non-consecutive days. And my last mention before we get started is that what we'll be doing today is what's called supersetting. So this is alternating two different exercises back to back without any rest. So I'm ready to go now, Chef AJ. I can't so, wait. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm just going to turn on a little more light for me to step back and you'll see me and then adjust my camera. And here we go. So first off, for activities of daily living. So the number one exercise that we want to do to reflect activities of daily living are squats. And I'm gonna present a couple of different types of squats for you. So first off, we wanna stand with the feet hips width apart. So we have this high pelvic bone over here called the iliac crest. We wanna place the hands to the inside of the pelvic bone. You look down, line it up with the knees and the ankles. That's hips width. Ladies, it's not this. Nobody is a linebacker, all right? Now, I'm going to kick it up a notch by utilizing a large umbrella and what's called a fit ball. It's like a squeegee little thing here and they don't burst, which is really cool and they're really easy to blow up. So I'm gonna put the ball between my knees and just a little bit up into my thighs. We wanna make sure the plug 
faces forward, not into your skin. And then holding on to the umbrella. Now, I do want to let people know that I did have a cast on my, well, it's my left arm. You see it as the right. I just recently had it removed. So anything in my hands is going to be pretty lightweight. So I'm going to show you the exercises from different angles. Taking the umbrella up top, lifting the toes inside the shoes. And inhale, I sit back into a chair. Exhale, I come up and there's a slight pelvic tuck at the top. Inhale, sit back and exhale up. Now I'm going to turn around and face this way. Hopefully the ball doesn't pop out. It can. Inhale, sit back. Exhale up. You see that? That is a spine extension, a little pelvic tuck. Inhale, exhale up. So the extensors of the body are the back muscles, the gluteals, and the quadricep muscles at the front of the thigh. I'm going to do one more repetition and exhale, lower it down. And my next exercise is going to be dead lifts. Before I grab my weights, I want to demonstrate the difference between a squat and a deadlift. So we already did the squat, but let's review it. Here's the squat, sitting back into a chair. Do you have to go that low? No, by the way. So for a deadlift, the knees are softened, hands are on top of the thighs, elbows are straight. And on the inhale, I'm going to come into this little subtle back bend and exhale down, inhale, exhale up. Here it is. So it's a hinging from the hip crease. Now, those of you who I mentioned, there's some contraindications with the spine. Don't do this. You continue with the squats. I will teach you something at the end. Now, I went right into the routine. Typically, I'm going to re recommend to people that they do, if they're 55 and up, a 10-minute warm-up before they work out. Now, what if you don't have all those issues, but you don't have the range of motion? So certainly, you can do this. Keep it really tiny. And folks, you don't have to wear a weighted vest but I didn't want to get osteoporosis again when I had the cast, and I didn't. We had a recent scan, and it's osteopenia. Why oh, more? Back to the umbrella and the ball. I'll add weights on the next set for the deadlifts. Here we go. I want to clear my backdrop. And sitting back, exhale up. Inhale, exhale up. You just go to the height that you can handle. You don't have to go so deep. Whatever works best. We want the chin up because we want the cervical spine at the back of the neck to do the same movement that the lumbar spine is doing at the bottom of your spine. They both do extension. And hold here. This time I will grab the weights and work on the dead lift. Uh, why not change sides? Feet hips width, hinging. Exhale up. Inhale. I want you to be able to bend down, get up without hurting your back. The squats, well, of course, you want to get up and down out of a chair, in and out of your car. Hey, up and down off your commode. No kidding. People get kind of trapped down there. I'm going to do two more. Exhaling, toes lifted inside the shoes. All right, set this down. When you set your weights down, please make sure that you cross the weight so it doesn't roll around on you. All right, my next one is going to be a split squat. Now, this is my step unit. Do you need to use it? No, but this is what I did for myself, right? And holding the weight. My thumb is not wrapped around the handle of the weight to spare that part that got fractured. Still in PT. 
Okay, standing tall, the back heel is super high. You're going to bend both knees, inhale, exhale. I push up from the ball of that back foot to fire up my left glute. Inhale, exhale. So we don't wanna go forward and back. We wanna go up and down. So, so far we've done compound movements and this is as well. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more. And because there's not a second exercise, you do this one as a superset unto itself, meaning you do it back to back. Shimmy the foot. Inhale, exhale. Push off the ball of that back foot. It will drive it up into the gluteal. Straight up and down, not forward and back. One more. And yes, folks, you're going to sweat. Get used to sweating. It's great for you. It's detoxifying. You're going to get breathless. That's okay. Standing tall, heel up, inhale, exhale. Push back through the heel, ball of the foot, nice and high, chest up. You can also hold the weights by your clavicle of your, at your shoulder area. All right, one more, I'm feeling it. And the other leg, woohoo. And if you live in Miami Beach the way I do, trust me, you're already sweating. And inhale, exhale. So yes, sweat is very detoxifying, very cleansing. When you exercise, put effort into it. However, it must be an acceptable level of muscular discomfort, not pain. I'm gonna do one more. Okay, I think I did both sides twice. Okay, great, and if I did it, oh well. Here we go. Now, the next round is going to be, ha, yes, here we go. I've got a big old board as the largest cue card you ever saw. It's a little cheat sheet. I'm going to set up a chair facing to the side. Now, I'm actually prepping for the exercise after this, all right? So because I am sweating, I'm going to put a little towel down on my chair. I'm taking my exercise loop. I'm going to face you for a second. Be careful when you get exercise loops. They're typically made out of latex. So when you buy one, if you have an allergy, you want to get latex free or non-latex, you want to hold your loop up toward the light. Make sure there's no like tiny little pinhole because if there is, don't use that, that uh, particular loop because it can just break and hit you in the face depending upon the exercise. So I'm putting a loop around my ankles, up my legs to just below my knees to be prepared for the next exercise so we can superset it. Sitting up tall is the one and only time I'm going to ask you to keep your knees a little bit forward of your ankles. And we're going to start the toe tap. I don't count. I just go to the point where it gets tired. Now, why do I emphasize lifting the toes during the squat work, et cetera? Well, this is part of why. What we're doing here is we're strengthening the shins. When you involve and, and you strengthen the shins, then what you're doing is not only helping the knees themselves, but also your balance. So that's where that comes in and why that is definitely part of an activity of daily living. And now whoo, this one will accumulate and it'll grab you. So yep, that's it for me on that one so far. Now, I'm going to grab light weights, just one pounder, and I'm going to stand with the legs wide apart. It's called 
a sumo squat, but it's the same type of form where you're sitting back into a chair. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. There is that pelvic tuck. I brought my foot in because I couldn't fully feel the engagement of the glutes. Now I can. So you can be a little too wide. So this band, I'm really pushing out into it. So it just makes the work a little more challenging. You need to level it up, folks, when it comes to bone density. You don't level up if it's your first day. You might not even level up for quite some time, but just understand it's there for you. I'm gonna do one more. Slowly bring them in. Now be careful. You don't really want to waddle around like I am wearing the loop, but it's what I have to do for the moment for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to face this way. Now, I want you to see, I want to make sure I can see some stripes up on my sneakers. Yes, great. All right, here we go. Round two. Sit tall. Now, sometimes what will happen with people who will do this, you don't want that to happen. You just stop. That means you can't go any further. There's no count here. There it is. Okay. And we're going to do another round of sumo squats. The whole objective with supersetting is to knock out a lot of work in as little amount of time as possible, but to stay very, very aware of your technique and form. So toes in the same line as each other, just a slight turnout. It's not like a big old dancer's turnout. So I'm gonna sit back. So this is abduction of the arms, adduction of the arms, going away from the midline, going toward the midline, inhaling and exhaling. Don't forget that little pelvic tuck, that little spine extension, and hold. Turn it on in, cross your weights. And I'm gonna remove the loop. Now, my next one is going to be regular squats. I'm going to have some weights for that for you, along with heel raises. So we just did the shin. You also want to get the calves. I'm going to move my step over here. Grab my five pounders. So I'm using this type of a grip. Notice the thumb isn't in there like this. I'm doing it to spare this hand. All right. So standing to the side. Again, hips width apart. Toes same line as each other and toes lifted inside the shoe. You sit back into a chair and exhale up. So these are five pounders in each hand plus the 20 pound weighted vest. And this will help me prevent the return of osteoporosis. Although the weights in my hands are just of oh, several days ago, that's it. I did a lot of stuff with tubing, loops, monster cords, all kinds of stuff. One more, chest is up. And now stepping over here to the platform. It's gonna cut off my head, I don't care. I want you to see my legs and my feet. The leg anatomically is from below the knee down from um, above the knee up is called the thigh anatomically. So I want you to see the feet and the legs. I have my heels dropping down just a little bit over the edge of the platform. And then I come up super high in the balls of the feet. For those of you with plantar fasciitis, bone spurs, a drop foot, you don't wanna come up on the platform. You wanna find out if these exercises are appropriate for you by contacting perhaps your podiatrist. 
Now, the benefit here is, of course, not just strengthening your calves, but one of the calf muscles is called the soleus. The soleus means second heart. And what it is partially responsible for is the venous return of the blood back up to the heart. So I'm going to do two more. Can you do this straight up and down from the floor? Sure. And grabbing my five pounders. So I'm going to show you another way to hold the weight up at the shoulder by the clavicle, the collarbone. And I'm going to face you now this time. Inhale, exhale. So there's that pelvic tuck. You exhale on the effort of an exercise. Keep the toes lifted, work those shins. And it also drives the work back into your heels, sparing your knees, working the gluteals again. One more. Lower the weights down. Second round here of heel raises. So basically, I have the balls of the feet, part of the arch on the edge of the platform, lowering down and up super high. Exhale. Now, this is typically quite challenging for men because they're more often tight at their ankles versus women because I think, you know, we had once the benefit of high heels till we realize that's not a good idea for the back. However, we're spared the tight ankles. Couple more, nice and high. This can be challenging for those of you with bunions or um, hammer toes. So again, find out from your podiatrist. And relax it. Okay. Now, <laughs> this is my least favorite exercise. I'm gonna move this out of the way but it must be done. So that's why it has to be taught as well. So this is called a lateral squat. Lateral squats outside, lateral side of the body. What you wanna make sure is you check your circumstance. Make sure it's safe. You're not gonna knock anything down, all right? I'm gonna stand a little forward so I don't hit anything here behind me. And the idea is I step out to the side. Now I'm landing into my left glute. It's not, you don't want the left thigh taking the whole thing. And then you close it. So it's abduction, adduction. If you really want to up the ante, you can put some weights in your hands. Good luck, but it's great. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And when I started with the weighted vest, I went up in quarter pound increments. I'm gonna do one more. One side will typically like this better than the other. So this is another exercise where we superset ourselves, all right? It's the same exercise, but back to back. Just double check. Here we go. Step it out, get it into that right glute. Inhale, exhale. Oh, I feel this for sure. Acceptable level of muscular discomfort. Pain, unacceptable. Two more. Other side, here we go. Step out a little bit more. Okay, here it is. Lift those arms up. Work the deltoid muscles of the shoulders simultaneously, particularly the middle head. One more. Here we go. So happy this will be over. Okay, and let's double check here. Here we go. You want to spring up 
to close, spring up. Two more. So now I'm gonna move the step, place it over here. And for the final two exercises before I give you a cool down, I have to step off camera just for like 30 seconds type feel. I gotta take this off and it's not a pretty picture. So I'll be right back, probably very sweaty. <laughs> Almost there. All right. So these other two exercises, they are not compound movements, but I think they are very, very important movements. Look, I, you already know, I'm soon to be 65 years old. I can say this. As we get older, we lose the strength of our gluteals and our hamstring muscles. We have to be strong when we ambulate, right? So that's why I'm gonna teach you these two exercises. The first one is going to be what I promised you at the beginning. For those of you with the spine issues I talked about, to not do a deadlift, you can do this one. This is a standing hip extension. Do you need a platform? No, but I want you to see, all right? So the head will be cut off. I'm going to stand a little more to the side, to the outside, placing the ball behind the knee. Squeeze the ball, and I'm holding it on. I mean, I should, I should say I'm holding on to the ball, and I'm just drawing the heel back and moving the hip. Now, you want to be upright. It'll be a slight angle forward, but very, very slight. Hips facing the wall, getting that gluteal muscle to fire up. Whew. And now the other leg, or should I say thigh? Okay. Get into that glute. Standing hip extension. Exhaling back, inhaling forward. Don't bring the knee all the way far forward. It's just a small movement. Last one. Oh yeah, okay. Now we're going to do the hamstring exercise. So basically all I'm doing is pushing, I should say drawing my heel up toward the butt. So I'm squeezing the ball. Belly button is in. Oh, feel that hamstring, particularly right in the belly of the muscle, the back of that upper thigh. I'm going to release other side. Squeeze the ball. Guess you can call it a hamstring leg squeeze. Belly button in. I'm gonna go for one more. Ooh la la. Now, I'm gonna show you another way to do it for the hip extension. However, this is not for the people with those contraindications. You stay upright. I'm gonna show you another way how you can do this. Placing the hand on the wall. Still grab the ball. Just kind of lean into it. Belly button up and in, and I'm gonna lift. And lift. Notice I don't drop all the way down. The foot is what's called dorsiflexed, flexed. So the sole of the foot can make an imprint on your ceiling. Let's go for one more. Ooh la la. Other side. Make sure the plug is not in of pointing toward the back of your knee. Don't drop the head down. 
Look forward and up. We want that cervical spine and lumbar spine. We do the same movement. It's a natural lordotic curve. Don't be afraid of the word. Just means extension. Two more. Ooh la la. All right, and I'm gonna come back up. That hamstring squeeze. You don't want the knee to go forward. Belly button in, standing tall. Sweat's just pouring down. Two more, squeeze it, squeeze it. Oftentimes when people work with the ball and the ball starts rolling out, it means that that hamstring is indeed quite weak. All right, so you just gotta keep working at it. Little by little. Key for exercise is consistency. Squeeze it. When you release it, it's a subtle little release. Too big of a release and the ball will go away from you. One more. And lower it down. So now I'm going to remove it. The step, and I'm going to give you your cool down. So what I like to do is target the um, spine, the movements of the spine. So I'm going to kind of borrow from yoga a bit, turning to the side. The knees are soft, hands lightly on the thighs, elbows straight. Inhale, I come into an extension of the spine. It's like a little back bend. Broaden across at the front of the shoulders, lift the chin up. Now on the exhale, I keep the chin up as I tuck the pelvis under, round, round, round. And when I cannot go any further, I lower the head. So this is spinal flexion. The prior one was spinal extension. This is like doing a standing abdominal crunch. And inhale into spinal extension. Exhale, spinal flexion. So those of you with those contraindications I mentioned for the spine, this is what you're going to do. You're going into the spinal extension, but then you just tuck under a little bit and look out and slightly down. That's where you were, here to here. The rest of us, we're going to go into it, pull out, inhale, and exhale, I want you to hold here, belly button in. The deeper you pull the belly button, the more you engage the transverse abdominis, the deepest of our core muscles. And from here, take your time, slowly roll on up. Let's take some nice shoulder rolls. So we've done spinal extension and flexion. Now I wanna do lateral flexion, which is basically side bending. So standing with the legs together, I'm going to bend the left knee, slide left hand down, turn your sternum toward the ceiling. It's not a twist, all right? It's not a twist. Just wanna make sure the sternum is toward the ceiling. We have the right hand to the waist. Now, by keeping the sternum up, we do not collapse this side, the left side organs, all right? We wanna keep that open. From here, provided there is no right shoulder issue, you bring your arm out, 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 and maybe this is your range of motion. That's fine, but don't do this because that puts too much stress on the shoulder and you're not going any further. So just stay here with a straight elbow and you go to where you can handle. So lateral flexion, a oh, beautiful stretch for the intercostal muscles between the ribs, the obliques at the waist. Inhale, turn palm up, grab a hook. Exhale, vigorously reach out, press down into your right foot to return to center. Let's take it to the other side. Bending, reaching down, reaching up, sternum toward the ceiling. And whatever that left shoulder can handle is what you do. Take it over. Oh, so for those intercostal muscles, they're responsible for 25% of your respiratory cycle. And inhale, turn the palm up, grab a hook. 
Exhale, push down into your left heel to return to center. Take a couple of shoulder rolls and one last movement. We're going to do now rotation of the vertebral column. So we're going to bring the legs wide apart. Now, do you have to go this wide? No, you can work here, that's fine. I'm gonna step a little forward because I don't wanna bang into the backdrop. And basically what you're going to do is some airplane movements. Now, I'm gonna stop here and you wanna look at the back heel, which is super high off the floor. You have the ankle, knee, hip facing the direction that you're turning. Same thing here. Heel high, ankle, knee, hip in the direction you're turning. And then you can just keep going. You can go as fast or as slow as you like. Sometimes if you even whack your back, it's excellent for your lungs. And then you start to slow it down. And that is what I have for you today, Chef AJ. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. That was some workout. I mean, you even got, you could see from your shirt, you even, you even perspired. Oh, you can't hear me? I'm not muted. I'm not muted. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, I can. Okay, yeah. Good. Okay, because I was I, I was just saying that's quite a workout because you pers even perspired. Oh, yeah, and I don't even know if you can see what my shirt says. Let me just turn that down so it's not so blary. But it is plant strong under there. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. You didn't have to go to a gym. You really didn't need any special equipment. Other, where do people get those balls? That was a really cool movement where you had the ball between your knee and your thigh. Right, yeah. Um, um, if they want, I'm happy to provide them with links for Amazon. I don't have any financial affiliation, or I could send you the link if you want to any of the accessories that I use today. I'm happy to provide that for you. Yeah, that, that's amazing. I, I mean, what's nice of having this on YouTube now, people could you do it with you. They have like a workout video they can do over and over. Yes, 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 absolutely. But I just want them, some of them, not all of them, but just some of them to be careful and to make sure it's appropriate for them. Now, do you ever work with people either in person or on Zoom for, for these kind of workouts? Or, or tell, tell us what you actually do. Thank you. you. I, yeah. I appreciate that. So I work virtually for um, personal training and I'm a senior fitness consultant. So I do personal training. I'm also certified at um, Hatha Yoga and prenatal yoga. So I do these virtually um, on site. I'm a licensed massage therapist. Uh, my specialty is Swedish massage, deep tissue, but I also do geriatric massage and I also do palliative care massage, which means I get brought in near the end of the loved one's life and I help them in that process of making it as comfortable as possible for them to make the transition. So that I do on site in Miami Beach. Well, I was going to say, they've yet to figure out how to do massage virtually. Yeah, that would really. be amazing if they could, you know? I know, I know. So I had a, an offer for your, your viewers, if you'd like. Um, my first session with everybody is always um, a sit down of going over their medical history form. It, it doesn't matter what modality it is. And so I'd like to extend a discount, I know this is gonna sound crazy, of $37.50 because um, I wanna offer that to them. So all they have to do is contact me by way of my contact form on my website, which is boomerandbeyondwellness.com and just say, hey, I saw you Chef AJ and if they're interested in working with me, I will extend that discount code to them. Well, well, it's not really a code. It's not really a code. <laughs> right. well, thank you. That's really, really nice. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's great. I mean, even though the pandemic is not where it was two and a half years ago, the idea of being able to do a workout like this in your own home is going to be very good for a lot of people because not everybody can either can afford to go to a gym, has the time. And it's amazing how much you can accomplish just in a small space. Oh, just yeah, absolutely. Body. Thank you. Thank you for the saying that, too. I, this this apartment is not really meant to be inhabited by anybody because it's a gym on uh, the, all the equipment and stuff. But that's my priority. You see, I don't expect that of others. But with some bands, tubing, et cetera, you can get quite a lot done. 
Yep. Well, you know, you're going to get, I know that you're a regular viewer of the show because I see you always supporting people, commenting in the chat and afterwards on the YouTube. So you know what question I'm going to ask you because every guest on Chef AJ Live gets this question. There is no escaping it unless you're at a True North Health Center water fasting. Angela, what do you eat in a day? Okay. Now, you know, I thought of that this morning going, well, I eat so simply, Chef AJ. I really do. I eat, um, I eat 80% raw and 20% cooked. The 20% is more like uh, blanched vegetables or steamed vegetables. And the rest is uh, lots of salad, fruits, legumes, veggies, uh, my grains. I typically go for um, ground rice or corn um, and everything with the exception of those those um, vegetables, what have you, are on the EWG list. So I go by way of the clean 15. So um, I, I just, I don't do recipes. I just eat the food. And when I have a salad, let's say, a, by, by the way, my salads are humongous. They're humongous. And um, Dr. Goldhammer would be proud. And um, so typically I'll just put on some organic um, uh, apple cider vinegar and squeeze the juice of a, an organic lime. I mean, I and I have hordes of greens, and especially when it comes to bone density, I'll even do lots of greens. And when I say greens, I'm talking about green leaves um, with my fruit. The only fruit I won't have it with are melons. Otherwise, it's just lots and lots of green. My greens will be like spring mix, spinach, arugula. I'll throw in sprouts. I'll throw in celery and have some fruit with it as well. That's great. Well, you know, people don't realize that. I mean, I've asked this, I mean, I've done, you know, close to 1200 shows and I haven't had anybody yet say that they don't eat simply, even, even some of the most talented chefs. I, I think there's a, they think people think like if you eat plant-based, it's got to be complicated when if for it to be sustainable, I think it, I think for anything to be sustainable, it has to be fairly simple. Yes. Yeah. It, it does. And at least for me, because I'm, I'm really busy and I, I, I can't do that. I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I love watching the cook, the chefs and what have you, but I'm just like, I went through that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, you live in Florida. So, I mean, hi raw, I, you know, cause you're in a fairly, you know, warm climate. So I think it's, I think it's easier to do raw in a, in a, in a warmer setting personally. I agree. Cause I was also raw up in Brooklyn and it is a big difference, but the produce was better in Brooklyn. Really? Well, I always thought, well, I, you know, I, I always hear from like people like Robbie Barbero, Miami Fruit and, and Jeanette D'Onofrio. I always hear about the fruit in Florida. Yeah. I mean, there's the local tropical fruit is outstanding, but others, I, I always found that the, the um, you know, when I compare it, I go, oh, it's just better up in Brooklyn. But then again, that was 20 something years ago, too. Well, <laughs> that's funny. That sounds like a, it sounds like an ad. It's better up in Brooklyn. <laughs> That is funny. Well, thank you so much. Do you ever like do group classes? I'm curious because you obviously you're a, a great, uh, I was going to say culinary instructor, a, a fitness instructor. Do you ever do group classes either in person? Um, I, I don't do, I don't do that anymore. I don't do it. I used to for many, many years, but I don't do group classes anymore. The group class I do do is um, for on a Zoom class with, for members of Feel Fabulous Over 40. We do it once a month. Nice. Very, Thursday of every month. So if you're a member there, we do have a group strength training class. Yeah. And if they want an umbrella they and don't have one, they can go to the 99 cent store. There it is. There you go. <laughs> you got it. Absolutely. Well, this was wonderful. Thank you so much, Angela. It Thank you wonderful. so much, AJ. My pleasure. And you're going to, it looks like you're going to say namaste. Yes. Namaste to you. Thank you. Perfect. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow. My guest is Dr. Joe Weiss, and he is going to be talking about the influence of our diet on our genes and our health. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.